The National Broadcasting Company presents Radio City Playhouse, Attraction 66. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the director of Radio City Playhouse, Harry W. Junkin. Thank you, Fred. Good afternoon, everybody. It seems to us that there are few things more appropriate as a Christmas gift to Radio City Playhouse listeners than a story by the inimitable Paul Gallico. Since 1936, when he first entered the short story field, he has been published regularly by such magazines as the Saturday Evening Post, Collier's, Cosmopolitan, and Esquire, and today we welcome him to Radio City Playhouse. Here then, with our very best wishes, is our Christmas Day broadcast. Lyle Sudrow as Perry Brown, Bernard Grant as Al Vogel, in Twas the Night Before Christmas by Paul Gallico, Attraction 66, on Radio City Playhouse. <laughs> It is four o'clock in the afternoon of Saturday, December the 24th, in the city room of the Daily Blade. Almost everybody has gone home. A couple of office boys are yawning on the call bench. Three rewrite men are pecking away at their typewriters and watching the clock. At the head of the room, Tex Court, the city editor, is talking earnestly into the telephone with a hunted look on his face. Nearer the door, Perry Brown, the Daily Blade's best reporter, is chatting with Al Vogel, his photographer. They're both about to leave for Rusty's party when Perry's telephone rings. Hello, Perry Brown. Uh oh, hello, Rusty. Yes, we're just leaving. Uh -huh, I'm all cleaned up. Uh, the, tree, uh, the tree come? Uh, good. Uh, no, no, Vogel's sitting on my desk. We'll leave together. Oh, honey, I'm going to trim that tree with diamonds, rubies, and sapphires. That'll run into dough. <laughs> Vogel says that'll run into dough. <laughs> huh? Oh, darling, if you play Holy Night, I'll cry. Yes, I will. I get very sentimental about Christmas. Yeah, Vogel will cry, too, won't you, Al? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> all right, we'll all cry, and it'll be a wonderful party. Oh, now, darling, don't worry about the Christmas tree fires. They won't break out until 9 o'clock, and besides, I'd quit before I'd miss the party. Okay, anything you want me to bring? Just me? Okay. Love you. Hey, why don't you marry the girl and put her out of her misery? I'm uh, working on it by this time next year. Come on, Al, let's get out of here. Right behind you. Let's go say Merry Christmas to Tex. Come on. It's a good idea. Come on. Rusty's as excited about this Christmas party as a five-year-old kid. It's our first real planned party. No kid. Yes, mm -hmm. Mrs. Pettensall, I understand, and I'm sure we can take care of it by 11 o'clock at number three Courtney Towers. Your harness to the wagon, yes. Mrs. Pettensall. It's all right, Mrs. Pettensall. I'll keep in touch with you. <laughs> Same to you. Goodbye. Uh, Al and I are just leaving, Tex. Merry Christmas and try to get up to Rusty's party if you can, will you? Uh, What's the matter? Perry, I meant to let you and Al go, but oh, no. something unforeseen is coming. No, you promised us the night off. You did, Tex. Yes, I know. And you'll get to Rusty's party later. Did you, uh, hear anything of that telephone conversation I just had? You, uh, mean Mrs. Pettensall? Tex. Her nephews have arrived unexpectedly from the West. She wants a Christmas present for her. Oh, no. She wishes us to secure a pair of goats for her. Goats? goats. Harness to a red wagon. Oh, you're kidding. Goats! Harness to a red wagon. Is she crazy? 
Where can you find a couple of goats in a red wagon on Christmas yeah, Eve? Yeah, where can you find a couple of goats? You mean where can you find them? Oh, Tex, no. It'll be all right if the outfit arrives at three Courtney Towers by 11 to 9. I won't do it. I promised Rusty. And I promised the wife of our editor and managing director that I'd get her two goats. All right, we quit, don't we, Al? Absolutely, we, we quit. We told Rusty nothing would keep us away from her first party. Listen, Perry, Al, I'm sorry, but I'm on the spot. Do you think I get a kick out of having my reporters used as footmen? Mrs. Pettensall's a bad little girl. Bad little She's a girl. gadfly sent to try us. I'm sorry, but it's all a part of the screwy business, and she is the wife of our managing director. Now, please, Perry. There's nobody else to send, please. I can't. Rusty will give me the air. That's she'll understand she's a newspaper woman. <laughs> no, 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 not tonight she isn't. Tonight she's a kid having her first Christmas You'll party. You'll just be a little late. Here, I'll give you a petty cash slip. Yeah. Get upstairs and cash it before five. How much? The sky's the limit. All right, a grand. I said the sky, not the stratosphere. You want your stinking goats, don't you? How do I know what I'll run up against? I may have to buy them from the zoo. Okay. Here. Need any help? Call me. Oh, thank you. And you call Rusty. I haven't got the nerve. She'll think I'm drunk. All right. Call her up and say you sent me out to get two goats and a red wagon. Oh, boy, she'll love you. Come on, Al. Maybe we can get the... Goats quick somehow. Uh... Hey, where are you going first, Perry? Where would you go to get goats? Brooklyn. Gee, Perry, it's nice driving over Brooklyn Bridge at night, ain't it? Yeah. Holy night, sun. Can I find two goats? Ah, the old bridge looks pretty tonight with all the lights on it and everything. Yeah. Where, oh, where can I find two goats? Hey, just, just look at the lights on the water, Perry, and the piers. Yeah. Look, huh? Yeah. Hey, Perry, look! Huh? Hey, hey, that flash of flame down there, look, will yeah, you? Hey, yeah, Perry, yeah, look, yeah, the piers yeah. on fire, look, will yeah, you? Yeah, 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 lovely fire. Maybe it'll burn all night. Too bad we can't go. What do you mean we can't go? You nuts! My dear Al, consider your position. We're in the service of the rich. We're after goats. We're not reporters. We're lackeys. Mrs. Pettensall would be very, very angry if we went to a fire instead of buying her two goats harnessed to a red wagon. Perry, we got to look. It's spread. Look at the orange and the yellow. I know. It's like an atomic bomb. Will you look? Hush look maybe I can grab a shot. Now, slow down, Perry. Please, maybe I can get a picture from here. No, 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 Al. We must let nothing turn us from our duty. We're not reporters. We're butlers. Well, I got it anyway. And maybe that won't be the picture of the year. <laughs> The first little goat will be silky and white, and I hope it gives Mrs. Pettensall a bite. Hey, Perry, will you stop singing? Huh? I knew we shouldn't have gone in any bars looking for goats. Oh, and where else would you look for a goat? Hey, Perry, uh, Perry, look, that taxi, look, uh, look, 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 and an ambulance. Mm -hmm. It's been an accident. Look, 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 Perry, slow down, please, will you? Mm -hmm. Hey, that woman, she's hurt. Please, Perry, no, slow down. Let me get a no, picture, will no, you? No, no, no. What would Mrs. Pettensall say if she ever found out you went around shooting a camera at people? I got it. Uh, oh, stop <sighs> taking pictures. Hey, you know what? You're uh, lost, that's what. We're lost in Brooklyn and we'll be here for years and years. We and years. are not lost. If you'd stop taking pictures, you'd see that we're now approaching Cyprus in 283rd. And if our friend the bartender is correct, we're about to get our first goat. Didn't he have any number? No. Brown shack at the corner of Cypress and 283rd. That must be it over there beside those signboards. Hey, what is it, a garbage dump? Or is that the goats I smell? Rudolph, please, be a good goat, will you? Now, come on. What's he stopping for? I don't know. Please, Rudolph, we're almost at the car. Now, in a little while, you meet Mrs. Pettensall. You like her. You can't pull them if they don't want to. Uh, now, look, Rudolph, I paid a hundred bucks for you. Will you please act like a hundred-dollar goat? Hey, he's slipping at something on the ground. Huh? Yeah. Hey, Perry, look. What? Perry. It's a body. What? Yeah, 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 in a sack. 
Suffering cats is a note on it. Well, give me a flashlight. Hey. Merry Christmas from the boys. Wow. I think I know him. A flashlight in his face, huh? Yeah. Holy cow, Perry. It's Pro Guard at the ace office. Yeah. Wow. He had his nose in the poultry racket, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas from the boys. What a story. And how? Well, too bad we're busy. We're... Perry, you're kidding. I'm not kidding. Business before pleasure. Hey. We're still one goat shy. Pro Gower. Well, let me take a couple of pictures. Okay, but make it snappy. All right, Rudolph. I'll give you one more chance. Hey. Are you or are you not going to get into the car without being kicked? Hey. Rudolph, stay in the back seat, hey. will you? Stop kissing me, I'm driving. Yeah, and you should have stuck to hey. lemonade. Oh, you should talk. While I think of it, who did you phone in that last tavern? The office, Tex. Oh, what you telling? Nothing. Nothing at all. Uh, he said Rusty had phoned and said you needn't bother coming to the party no matter how early you got through. Oh. And uh, I just sort of casually mentioned the fire and the pro Ah, uh, that'll teach him to send us out after goats. Hey. Where'd that bartender say we should go? Oh, guy by the name of Constantine Buonacasa. Huh? It's just a couple of blocks more. <coughs> well, now what's the matter with Rudolph? I believe he is slightly <coughs> loaded. He downed a whole can of beer the barkeep gave him. More likely it's the can. He downed that too. <coughs> Mr. Buonacasa? Yes? Uh, well, my friend here and I, curious as it may seem, are seeking to purchase a goat. Yeah, yes. goat. Yeah, yeah. A goat. Uh, Jerry, the, the bartender at Mike's Tavern, said you had goats. <laughs> you make the, the, the joke, eh? No, no. Uh, come on, we got company. You drink a glass of wine. Everything should be all right. Christmas time, everybody should feel okay. Uh, look, any time <laughs> but Christmas Eve, it might be a gag. It's dead on the level, brother. I got to get another goat. Now... Have you got one? And we ain't kidding. This yeah. is no funny business. Honest. All right. You come with me. Yeah. Uh, you uh, have got goats, haven't you? Sure, I got the goats. Paolo and Francesca. Uh, they man and a wife. Oh, oh. Nice goats. Good goats. You like a goat, eh? Uh, oh, uh, sure. Yeah, we love goats, don't we, Al? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Especially on Christmas Eve, we love goats. Yeah. yeah he's in here, in the shed. There, Paolo and Francesca. Goats. <laughs> oh, the chain's got them yet. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 Mr. Buona Casa. See? Si? How, how, mu how much for the big one? Ma che vergogna! I tell you, the name is Paolo and Francesca. This is a husband and a wife. I don't sell a one. You married man, I think you understand, oh, eh? <laughs> oh, oh, forgive me, old man, you're right. I don't know what I was thinking about. Yeah, 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 they look so pretty. Yeah. They're in love. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, look, look. Uh, yeah, sure, look. Uh, Mr. Bonacasa, I, I got a goat outside. Yeah? Swellest goat you ever saw, Rudolph. Rudolph? He, he loves everybody. Crazy about everybody. Yeah, what, what about a deal? I buy Paolo and Francesca, you take Rudolph and part swap, huh? Yeah, you can have one swell, loving goat and some cash. Everybody, she's a happy, huh? I don't want the one the goat. Uh, no? No. What's the matter with having one goat? What good is one a goat except to another goat? Except... <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, look, uh, Mr. Uh, Buonacassi, it's a deal. Uh, how much? Well, I'm not sure I want the much to sell now. Three hundred dollars? How much? Amici, she's good. Paolo and Francesca, they're yours. Now, you come in the house and we have a summer wine. It's a, it's a party. We sing a songs. We lift the ceiling. Lebriamo, lebriamo, little do dum dum. I know we shouldn't have stayed at one of Casa's party so long. I just knew it. Perry, Perry, please stop, will you? 
If I don't eat soon, I'm gonna die. Now, please, please. We got the goats. We got three goats, in fact. Let's eat and get them up to Mrs. Pettenstall's, huh? Will you shut up, Rudolph? You too, Francesca. Will you pipe down? Holy smokes, we're up to our neck and goats. What are we gonna do with three goats, Perry? What are we gonna do? Hello, everyone. If we don't eat soon, Perry, I'm gonna be sick. You know something, Perry? I wouldn't have blamed that weight if he'd have socked you. Russian caviar in a dump like this. You kidding? One, two, one, black. Shh. Al, I'm sleeping. Now, please, do not disturb me. Allow me to sit here with my head in my hands and suffer. Stop nudging me, Al. Will you stop nudging me? Good evening, all. Mind if I join the party? Rusty. Hello, Perry. Don't suppose you'd mind if I sat down. Oh. You're sore. Not at all. It's been a perfect Christmas Eve. How'd you find us? You left a trail a blind man could follow. When I saw your car parked outside with three goats in the back seat, I sort of figured you might be in here. Oh, don't be sore, Rusty. Don't sore? be sore. Why should I be sore? Well, what are you doing away from the party? There is no party. Huh? Can I have some coffee, too? What do you mean? I'm working. Everybody's working. There's never been a Christmas like it before. Progower was murdered. Progower of the DA's office. Oh, for goodness sake. Well, well fancy that. It also happens that Pier 547 Brooklyn blew up. Not really. Perry, why do you drink? Ah, uh, because they sent me out on Christmas Eve to buy two goats and a red wagon. Oh. Have you got the wagon? Huh? The wagon! The wagon! Oh, 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 I haven't got the wagon. Well, I have. That's one reason I'm here. It takes thought you'd forget. Where is it? Outside my car. Oh, Rusty, you're wonderful. Am I? We got one goat too many, Rusty. Hmm, you noticed it too, did you? Isn't Mrs. Pettensall going to be surprised? <laughs> What's the matter with them now? They're frightened. Now, listen, Goat, you're out of the elevator. All you got to do is walk down this nice, quiet hall here, see? That's it. Now, just walk slowly down the hall to apartment three. Yeah, and stop kissing me. <laughs> oh, look, Rusty, Rudolph loves me. Look, it's quarter to 11. The Pettensalls will be home in yeah. 15 minutes. All right, all right, all right. Vogel, huh? you take Paolo. Yo, Rusty, you yeah. grab Francesca. Go. Come on. For you, Rudolph. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Jesus. Well, whoever answers this door is in for an awful shock. Wait, Rudolph, Rudolph, he's lovely, he's kissing me. Merry Christmas, Rudolph, you're the sweetest little goat in the whole wide world. Good evening, good heavens. Are you the Pattensalls butler? I am, sir. And might I ask what you are? Move over, we got goats. You got a bathroom with a sunken tub? Hold still, Rudolph. There. There, there. I guess you're clean. Oh, they both uh, look like fluffy little lambs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but Rudolph, Rudolph here doesn't deserve a bath ever smashing the Pettensall's mirror. Well, he couldn't help it. Hmm? It's the first time he'd ever seen himself and that mean expression on his face. Uh, uh, all right. Hold still, Rudolph. You'll be dry in a minute. That's a boy. All right, give me another towel, Rusty. Hey, you've used five already. <laughs> Bathroom looks like a nightmare. It's a boy. Yeah, well, you can't deliver dirty goats to Mrs. Pettensall. <laughs> Say, he's real cute when he's clean, isn't he? Hey, what's Vogel doing? Uh, making hey. a harness out of neckties. Let's <sighs> try. Let's get him harnessed to the wagon uh, and get out of here before the Pettensalls arrive. Yeah, huh? yeah. Come on, Rudolph, you look swell. Hey. Well, come on, Rusty, open the door. 
Yeah. Oh, hey, hey, this is sure some dump. Oh, oh how's the harness coming, Al? <laughs> I used Mr. Petzl's neckties. Hey, look at it. Swell, ain't it? Oh, Al, yeah. Al, it's the nicest harness I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> hey, did you ever see a tree like that in your whole life? Never, mm. and I never will. I'll never, ever have a Christmas like other people. Never. Well, let's just get them harnessed. <laughs> There. Finished. Red wagon and all. Yeah. Now, don't they look cute? <laughs> Paolo and Francesca, man and wife. Makes me want to cry. Oh, what are they doing to the tree? Looks to me as if they're eating Give it. A... a little at a time. Uh, uh, Rudolph! Oh, good Lord. Darn you, anyway, Rudolph. Oh, Perry, look out. He'll break uh, the other Rudolph. one. Rudolph! Suffering oh. cats! Hey, hold it. Here come the petting souls, I bet you. Oh, what's going on in here? My vase. Oh, both of them. What is the meaning of this? Who are you people? Alan, are these people from the paper? I believe they are, my dear. Get out of here, all of you. You hooligans, you're drunk. I beg, beg your pardon, we're not drunk. Of course you're drunk. Otherwise, what's the meaning of the third animal? It is a spare. A spare? That's supposed to be funny. Will you please leave? Alan, I expect you to deal with these people tomorrow. Oh, Rusty, I believe Mrs. Pettensall is sore. Is she? Well, so am I. Mrs. Pettensall, you're all through with Perry Brown now, aren't you? I don't believe I know yes, who... Yes, you are. You're through with him. He's drunk and he's dirty, and besides, he served your purpose. He got you what you wanted, two goats and a red wagon on Christmas Eve. No other man in town could have done it tonight, or would have. Get out of here, you... You've been using our office and our staff to do your dirty work for the last five years. Where? Run errands, fetch and carry, fix things for you, play nursemaid to you. Well, that's out as far as we're concerned. And when you replace us, I suggest you go to an employment agency that furnishes trained servants. <gasps> It'll be nice to know you can call up the office when you need an extra butler. Come on, boys, come on, Rudolph, let's get out of here. I can smell something that has nothing to do with goat. Well, I've now, now, never now, been... Now, 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 my dear. Uh, good night, Miss McGowan, Miss Brown, Mr. Vogel. Good night. Oh, come on, let's get out of here. We got rid of Al. Yeah. Now, if we could only get rid of Rudolph. I called up the zoo. Well? They didn't want a goat. Oh. Mm -hmm. I called up the Metropolitan Museum of Art, too. <laughs> what on earth for? I don't know. I thought maybe because it was Christmas Eve, they might make an exception. <laughs> What'll we do with them? Honey, I don't know, but I'm, I'm not going to abandon Rudolph on some cold vacant lot. He's got a right to Christmas, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, where will we take him? I don't know. I guess we'll just wander around Brooklyn with him until we die of old age. Yeah. No, 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 don't kiss me when I'm driving, Rudolph. Yeah. <laughs> he loves me, Rusty. Yeah. I know. I do, too. Yeah. Do you? Mm-hmm. For heaven's sakes, let's get some coffee. I'm perishing with a cold, Perry. Look, there's a place. Mm -hmm. Come on, stop, Perry. All right, all right, all right. Do you, do you think you love me as much as Rudolph loves me? Um, I think I do. Okay, then I'll buy you some coffee. All right, now, uh, get uh, Rudolph out on your side. Huh? Can't he stay in the car? Well, Rudolph's got a right to his Christmas, too. Yeah, boy. Go on, Rudolph. Go with Rusty. Yeah, yeah it's a fella. Come on, Rudolph. Yeah. Good old Rudolph. <laughs> oh, Rusty, honey, I just couldn't leave Rudolph without a home on Christmas Eve. It wouldn't be human. I know. Do you suppose we'll have to keep him forever? I don't know. There we are. All right, now. Sit down, Rudolph. Sit down beside us and shut up. Hey! Hey, hey, mister, hey, you can't bring that goat in Oh, here. yes, we can. It's Christmas Eve, coffee and donuts for two, and some wheat biscuits for Rudolph. 
Is that what goats eat? Yeah, yeah, just one of the things. No, 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 no. Leave, him, leave him in the box. That's hmm? right, yeah, he'll eat the box and all. He'll be hysterical when he hits the biscuits after all that cardboard. Sure? Yeah, thanks. Here, Rudolph, now, don't let me hear a sound out of you. Yeah. Boy, I've seen everything, huh? Donuts and coffee coming up. You unhappy, kid? <clears throat> Fairy, I'm an awful fake. I've loved every minute of it. No fooling. Mm. I was mad because you wouldn't take me with you. <laughs> oh, it's a lousy racket, but we love it. I guess we're out of it now, though. We haven't got a job, Rusty. Oh, I think we have. Remember when Mr. Pettensall said goodnight? Yes. He winked at me. No kidding. Mm. <laughs> He's been wanting to tell her off for years. Oh, I'll bet. Perry, can't you remember anything that happened tonight? Oh, some of it. Well, you know, there's a bonus waiting for you at the office. A bonus? Uh -huh. What for? For your work on the Pier 547 explosion. What? Vogel took a picture of it. Yeah? Yeah. He also took a picture of the death of some Brooklyn alderman's wife in a taxi accident and a half a dozen of Progower's bodies. Yeah, what are you talking about? Vogel phoned the office around six yeah. and said if we would go to an address he gave us and look behind some signboards, there'd be something for us. Uh -huh. There was. On top of Progower's body were half a dozen plates and a note from Vogel with the captions on them. They're all over page one now. Well, I'll be good old Vogel. I tried to make an honest flunky out of him, but I guess he's just a newspaper man at heart. Huh. So you see, everything's all right. Yeah, yeah, I guess it is. Now, if we could only just get rid of Rudolph. Hey! Yeah. Hey, mister, give me two coffees and two donuts to go. Hey, oh, Rusty, Rusty, look. What? That kid. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, Sonny. Sonny, come here, will you? Hello, lady. Hi, Sonny. Hello, mister. Hi. Merry Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas to you. Say, how would you like a goat for Christmas? Her? Him. Honest? Honest. You mean just take him? Right now. You want him? Gee, do I? Gosh. Call him Rudolph. Gee, thanks, mister. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Come on, Rudolph. Yeah. 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 Well, we've done it, Rusty. We've done it. Rudolph has a home. <laughs> Darling. Merry Christmas. Perry. Hey, 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 cut out that kissing stuff. I run a respectable joint. <laughs> You have just heard Twas the Night Before Christmas by Paul Gallico, starring Lyle Sudrow as Perry Brown. Bernard Grant was Al Vogel, and other members of the cast included Ross Martin, Frank Milano, Louis Van Ruten, Connie Lemke, Butch Cavell, and Grace Keddy. The special music was composed and conducted by Dr. Roy Shield. Twas the Night Before Christmas was adapted for radio by Harry W. Junkin, who also directed the entire production. This is Harry Junkin again. Next week on Radio City Playhouse, Jan Minor gives vitality and charm to the role of Anne Stratton in a tender and beautiful love story called Reflection. That's next week, Reflection, Attraction 67 on Radio City Playhouse. Merry Christmas, everybody, and good afternoon. What's on NBC tonight? There's a Christmas stocking full of entertainment. As a holiday special, Theater Guild on the Air will present Paulette Goddard and Sir Cedric Hardwick 
in that perennial favorite, The Passing of the Third Floor Back. Hear this special Christmas program, Paulette Goddard and Sir Cedric Hardwick, on Theater Guild on the Air. You'll find a Merry Christmas all day long on NBC. Fred Collins speaking. Now stay tuned for James Melton and Harvest of Stars on NBC. Thank you. 